In consulting, things seem to come in waves, and over the last few weeks, I have built so many pop-ups, not just for deletion confirmations, but to capture user inputs, to trigger flows, all sorts of things. Accidents happen all the time, and without a proper confirmation step, users could be deleting important information or submitting something by mistake. That's why in today's tutorial, I want to show you how to create a modern, interactive pop-up in Power Apps to confirm user actions, keeping your apps both slick and foolproof. Now in this step-by-step -step guide, you'll learn how to use containers to build a responsive pop-up modal. You'll dynamically show and hide pop-ups leveraging variables. We're going to use modern buttons for confirmation and cancellation actions. And we're even going to capture user input for extra validation. Now, if you love Power Apps, tips, tricks, and deep dives, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications because we've got tons of advanced Power Platform content coming your way. All right, let's jump in and start building. Here we are in the demo app. For this use case, I'm leveraging a SharePoint document library with various metadata columns here with the column for comments, which we'll get into in a minute. But you could use whatever data source you want here, Dataverse, whatever floats your boat. For here, I'm using SharePoint just because it's easy. Now let's get into the app. We have the main screen, which I'm leveraging a uh, just a header and footer screen. And it's a vertical gallery. And we've just pulled in the data from SharePoint. If you need to know how to do that, look at some of my previous videos. And over here, we're leveraging our variables to change the icon. Now, if this record is marked as delete, we have the option to undelete it from the app. So let's look at how this works. If I click on the icon, we get the option to restore the project safety meeting minutes, and we're going to mark it as ready for restoration by who, the user, my full name, and the date. And here you see the logic. We're leveraging the current item status. If the current item status is pending delete, then the word here is deletion. Other word, well, otherwise, it's restoration. So we can leverage the same screen for multiple things. Don't create different screens if you don't have to. Just leverage your variables to make it work for multiple options. Now the button down here is a modern button. You can see my videos on modern controls. More and more of the modern controls are becoming ready for prime time. As of the time of this recording, I've had no problems with just leveraging modern buttons for text and icons. I just like how easy they are to work. So on the button text itself, we're doing a bunch of code. I'll get into that in a minute but here's a preview of it. And then on the text itself, we're leveraging that same logic. If this item's status does not equal pending delete, then the button says yes delete. If it is um, pending delete, then say yes restore like you see in this, in this example. The cancel button is just cancel. There's nothing that we need to do here. But this is what I wanted to highlight in this use case you could capture comments from the end user. So we're capturing who did it, when, but we can also capture their comments. Please restore this, please delete this, I made a mistake. Plus, because I wanna make sure that they can really make 100% accurate decisions on what they're doing to which documents, here we have a baby preview of the document and you can click to open it and it'll open it right in our SharePoint. Now, if this was a Excel sheet or a Word doc, we could actually come in and make changes to it, which is the fabulous thing about SharePoint libraries. I did a video on SharePoint libraries. Go watch that if you want to get more into why you should do that. So I hit cancel. Now let's look at how that pop-up is built. Let's click on one of these other ones that have a trash can icon and you see how it says delete emergency response can plan. Okay, let's cancel. Let's start with the icon itself. So this is an icon in the gallery. When we select the icon, the on select for this is we're setting the variable called var this item. If you watch any of my videos, I like to be consistent, so I always use var this item. So any one of my coworkers, if they come into my app, can come in and know what I'm talking about here. We're also setting a variable var delete equals true. Now what happens when var delete is true? If I click the icon and we go over to our tree, we have a container. Now, at the time of this recording, if we come up here to insert and we type in container, we have three types of containers. Container container, a horizontal container, which lays out everything horizontally, and then a vertical container, which lays everything out vertically. Now, the nice thing about containers is that everything within it is treated as part of that unit. It's a new version of grouping. So for our use case here, if we look at the container delete, 
The visible property is, you guessed it, var delete. So if we look at the cancel button, when we click cancel and we go to advanced, we can select on select here. We could come over here and select on select. When we hit cancel, we're setting var delete to blank, which means don't show it anymore. And we're resetting our comment box that's called complete comments right here. So as we work down the tree view within our container, oh, let's go back to container delete. You'll notice that I have, let's go back to display. I have the drop shadow set to light. Let's set it to bold. Let's really make it pop. And there's an example of my coffee rule. If something should work and doesn't work, just give it a minute. That took a red hot minute. I had time to go get a Zao. This video is not sponsored by Zao, but The Rock, if you're watching, I wouldn't say no. Okay, so back to our container delete. Here, this container is sitting on top of the entire screen. It is just giving us this nice little gradient background here. We have it set to light. If I set it to bold, you get a little bit more pop. But what I wanted to show you here is the color fill. I could have the color fill on this container be one, but I like to give the end user just a little bit of feedback to know that the app hasn't closed. We're still there. So as we go down within container delete, and I know I always say that you should rename things. I don't do that in containers because I tend to have so many containers within containers. So container two is the vertical container that you see here. This one has a drop shadow of bold. Let me unselect it so you can see here. Select it over here. It's not gonna let me do that. So I'm gonna change it to extra bold. You see here how we get more of the drop down. I don't have to do any of the coding for that. I don't have to round the corners one at a time. It, the containers just make life so much easier. So let's take it back to bold. Now within our container here, we have our labels. And the text for this label is taking if var this item status value doesn't equal pending delete. Now var this item status value is from my SharePoint list. It's a choice column. And right here we have the approval statuses. If it doesn't equal delete, we're gonna do something with it. If it doesn't equal pending delete, then the text here says delete. If it is of a pending delete status, it says restore. One label gives us both options, so much easier. And bar this item name, the name of the document. Now here, this gives your end users the feedback that it is being marked as deletion by you, the user's full name on the date of now. Now in here, we have the option to do any comments. So let's move down the container. We have a horizontal container. If you're using container bingo, you've probably won at this point. But within here, we have a text input that I've called complete comments with no default, but it does have hint text. So when a user clicks in there, the hint text deletes. Now I have another container that is giving me the button. Well, hold on, let me dig into this a little bit more. Within the horizontal container, we have the comments on the left, and then I have another container container. And the reason I have a container container is because I have a button on top of a vertical container holding the image of the item and the text giving the user the cue to click to open. Now, why I did that is if we preview the app, if I didn't have that button on top, we wouldn't get this user feedback of a finger showing them that there is something there to do. So if we come back out and let's just delete that button, just gonna cut it and we play the app one more time, the user doesn't get that feedback that they can click here, it's just an arrow. I've had quite a few people ask for that functionality, so it's something that I've just started doing. So within our container container, I have a modern button and let's look here, I have no text. I have no icon, and if we scroll down, it's a transparent button. Let's change it to primary. There you can see the button covering everything. I'm gonna set it back to transparent. Here's the important part. You have to have it fill the parent, both in width and height, so that way it's dynamic. So now, if we dig into this container, on the image, there's the images. Var this item thumbnail medium. And if we go to the advanced, the on select is a launch. And it's a launch of var this item linked to item. So it'll open it up right in SharePoint. Fabulous, right? Now here we have one more label. And if we go back to display for this label, I'm leveraging emojis. So the um, Windows key and period on my keyboard, 
gives me that little document and click to open in just a gray font. So it really is helping hold your user's hands. Now, let's play the app one more time. Please delete. Right, so if we have comments in here, obviously we're not gonna capture them. But what happens if we have no comments? And you see here it's not required. So let's get out of the preview mode and look at the code for the delete button. Before I forget, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can download all the files from this video. Just a little plug there. It makes your life a little bit easier if you really want to get into the meat and potatoes of this app without having to type all the code again. So you'll see here, I have a var spinner true. I'll show you what that does in a minute. And then I'm using the patch function to my library, leveraging var this item. And I'm taking and patching to my comments column var this item dot comment. So I'm taking what's there and I'm appending it. I'm adding the date and a dash and then in bold the user's name and then a break. And then if they gave us any comments, if it's not blank, put the comments in there. Otherwise put in there the comment, no comment entered. Then depending on the current status of the item, we are either setting its status to pending delete or pending review. Now, I really like to capture any errors from the backend data source. If something goes wonky, we're going to give the end user, we're going to hide the spinner again, we're going to give the user the feedback that there was an error, and if not, we're going to tell them that it was successful, and we're going to reset that text box, we're going to set var this item to delete, or to blank, and then we're going to set var delete, which is the pop-up, to delete. Let's see it in action. Let's mark the emergency response plan for deletion. I'm going to hit the delete button. I could preview the app or preview the document. And there we have our pirate meeting notes. I, since it's a Word doc, look at this. I can come in here and make changes to it prior to deletion. Testing. I save the comment or it saved the addition. So I can come back in here, pulls it up. There's my addition to the document. Love using SharePoint libraries for this purpose. So please delete this. Now on the action of this status changing, we could send it via Power Automate to different people for approval and all that. We can get into that in a different video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. I'm going to mark it for deletion. So I say yes, delete. Here's that spinner. Remember I showed you the var spinner. And did you notice the error message that popped up? Did you see that at the top? Because we just made a change to the Word doc, it wasn't able to patch. So that gave the user the feedback that something went wrong. So now that we've experienced an error, that's why you really want to have that feedback to the user. Now you know nothing worked here, we have to do it again. And you would want to, if this is going to happen in your use case or if your environment, you're going to want to build that into your app. Let's try this again. Please delete this. We get the spinner while the actions are happening in the background. We get the message saying that it was successfully marked for deleton. And now if we expand out, I added just a little carrot in here to expand out. We see our comments. Please delete this. Well, let's restore it. So I'm going to click the same icon. Please restore this file or mark it as restoration or whatever. I'm going to hit yes, restore. We get the spinner. We get the notification. And here you see we have all of the comments. Let's look at the code behind the button. So back into the app, we're going to click on one of the restore buttons and click on the button here and we're going to expand out. The first thing that's going on here is we're setting var spinner to true. Now guess how we're doing that? You're right, we used a container. I have a container over here called container spinner with a GIF in it. Now right now the container is only set to visible when var spinner is true. So let's just set it to true. And there you have the spinner. It's just a GIF that I uploaded and we have running. So var spinner, and I don't have to add any logic there because it's true or false. I just have to put the variable in there. So back to the button code. Um, whoops, ah, I hit it. Anyway, it's been restored now and we have no comments entered. You can see the comments. Let's get back into the button one last time. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the button and then instead of holding the alt key, I'm gonna expand out the code for us. Now remember, you can always download this if you subscribe. Var spinner is true, 
and then we're patching to our library var this item. And what we're doing here is we're taking the SharePoint column comments. We're taking what's currently in there. We're doing a hard return. I added that in there because I noticed a buggy bug. And then we're taking now, which is the timestamp, a dash, username. We're ending the strong. I wanted to bold the username. And then if they put comments in there, add the comments. If not, enter, no comment entered. Now, if the status is pending delete, we set it to pending review. And otherwise, we set it to pending delete. And then if we have any errors, we set the spinner to false. That's so you can see the error and we show them the error. Or if, it's, if there are no errors, if there are no errors sent back from the library, we set the spinner to false because we don't want to see it and we give them the notification that it was working. We also want to show the error message so that they know what's going on here. Then we're resetting the, the text field, the comments. We're setting var this item to blank. We're setting var delete to blank, and then we're refreshing our data source. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this. Happy coding. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts, questions, and any topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Sharing is caring, so don't forget to share this tutorial with your fellow Power Apps enthusiasts. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep rocking Power Apps like a true pro. See you in the next video.